A quick quiz. Do you know what your espresso machine's brew temperature actually is? Like, really, really know? Maybe you've tried this. Or maybe this. Or even this. If that's what you've been doing, I hate to break it to you, but yeah, you're not getting true brew temperature readings. Hey, espresso lovers, Mark here from Whole Latte Love. Today, if you're game and easy DIY project for you, I'm gonna show you how to build the rig I use to test espresso machine brew temperatures. They're simple to make, super accurate, and you can build it in less than 10 minutes for under a hundred bucks. Now, I've made them for 58 and 54 millimeter porta filters, usually for use in a bottomless, but I have made them running through the spouted porta filters as well. So what can you use this for? Well, even on machines with PID, the temperatures that you set there, you know, they're not always gonna be what you get. PID machines measure temperature within a boiler where it's usually higher than what's gonna end up on your coffees. Now, the programmable offset is gonna be able to correct for that, but those offsets, they aren't always set correctly. Machines without PID, like a lot of heat exchange, single boilers, and thermal blocks can have very wide swings in temperature due to variables like idle time and where they are in the boiler's heating cycle. In fact, this is the device I use to test and perfect my well-known method for obtaining consistent 200 degree Fahrenheit temps on the Gaja Classic Pro E24. So here's the deal. I've been testing espresso machines for over a decade and I've used all the fancy gear out there. You know, it's expensive and sometimes those devices are tricky to use. Take the SCASE device. It's been the gold standard for a couple of decades, fully assembled into a pressure reading porta filter. You're looking at around 600 bucks. Even the DIY version without pressure where you bring your own bottomless porta filter is $400. And both those options, they don't include the meter that'll run you another hundred or two. Then there's the Passato TPD. I've used this a lot. It goes for around 250 bucks. It shows you a pressure and gives you a temperature reading, but tuning the flow rate here to match the SCA standard can be tricky, so it's often really frustrating. Now, here's the rub. The SCA standard specifies a simulated coffee puck in the test device in a specific flow rate for the test, which is 52 grams out by weight in 22 to 28 seconds. The fake puck takes into account the volume of coffee and the flow has to be right, too high or low, and you're not getting an accurate reading of what temps will be during a real extraction. Now, the SCASE has the simulated coffee puck and a valve to control the flow, and unless that valve maybe gets clogged up with old coffee grounds, ask me how I know about that one, the TPD does not have a simulated puck. It does have an adjustable valve to control flow, but getting it dialed in right, like I said, it's tricky at best. I can't tell you how many times I think I have it set just right, then I go to do another test and the flow rate is different, which can really throw off temperatures. And yes, that one can clog up too. So I figured there's gotta be a better way, one that's accurate, reliable, easy to use, and doesn't require maybe pawning a grinder to afford it. My solution is mounting that thermocouple right into the center of a filter basket so the tip sits just under the top of the coffee puck during a real shot. No simulations here, just you, your coffee, and some good old-fashioned DIY. And the MVP of this build, yes, the UV cured super glue. Check this out, you got a little light right on there. You know, I might have learned about this on an episode of How It's Made or maybe during a late night rabbit hole about glue online. Either way, it's a game changer. Now, here's what it looks like. You make the device and drop it in a bottomless porta filter, plug it into a temp logger, prep a dialed in shot, pull it and watch the temperature read out in real time, second by second for a real extraction. So let's do the build, it's super easy. All you need is the filter basket, the drill with a thin bit, the K-type thermocouple, the UV set glue, and some small zip ties. I'm using JB Weld Super Weld product, which conveniently has the glue and that UV light right in one unit. Step one, find and mark the center of a filter basket. I'd use one similar to what you normally use. In my case, it's an 18 gram double shot filter basket. 
using a small bit, drill a hole just big enough to push through the K-type thermocouple tip. Push the probe through and position the tip of the probe about a quarter inch below where the surface of your tamped puck will sit. Now, if you're not sure where that is, you know, tamp up your usual dose in a basket and do some measuring to find the right height. Once you've got it in the right spot, hold the wire from the underside and add a drop or two of the UV glue. Hit it with a light all around for a few seconds till it sets, then flip and repeat on the bottom side. Now, you want to use as little glue as possible. It doesn't really take much and you don't want to overdo it and block the filter basket holes unnecessarily. You still want them doing their job. Now, if you don't get it quite right, really no worries. Replacement probes are about two bucks a pop on the Big A, and that's gonna be cheaper than one of those bad cappuccinos. Now, once everything is in place, you can use a zip tie to double back the probe wire so espresso drips right into your cup. So here's a breakdown of the build cost. Now, depending on what you can put in the bring your own category and which temp logger you go with, it's less than 90 bucks. If you already have a meter that can read K-type thermocouples, all you might need is the UV set glue. At the extreme end, if you need everything, including a filter basket, bottomless port of filter and tamp stand, it's gonna be in the 180s to 240s, depending on your meter choice. I use this four channel K-type logger, the 88598. It costs about 135 bucks, but cheaper ones around $75, they'll work too. It logs temps to an SD card at one second intervals for up to four probes. From the text files it creates, you can make graphs, do analysis, you know, all that fun nerdy stuff. And yes, you should check the calibration of the device. To do that, get some water up to a rolling boil in a pan, Fully submerge the device with the probe side up, let the temp settle for a few minutes, and look for the highest reading. At sea level, you should read precisely 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 Celsius. If not, use the logger's offset function to correct for any errors. Now, this part is really important. You're pulling real shots here, no simulated flow or coffee puck proxies. So for consistent, meaningful results, you do need to dial in your coffee to produce a one to two ratio in 22 to 28 seconds per the SCA standard. So weigh your coffee dose, weigh your espresso output, and time the shot. My pro tips for using the device, first up, do that calibration in the boiling water I went over earlier. You'll know you don't have a wonky thermocouple or meter and be able to correct for any errors using your meter's offset. I've been pleasantly surprised with how accurate these $2 K probes are. I've calibrated a bunch and the worst error I've ever had was 0.3 degrees Fahrenheit and most have been within one tenth of a degree. Since you've got wires hanging out there, be sure and use a tamping stand or something similar when tamping so you don't smush them. You don't have to use a bottomless porta filter, no. I've run probe wires up through spouted porta filters to the filter basket. Just know you're committed to that probe in the porta filter unless you sacrifice the probe wire. Clean the test basket between tests. I have not used products like Defisa for that. It might be fine, I don't know for sure, so I'm not gonna use them. I just rinse and wipe them well with plain hot water. For interpreting results, some machines like those with rotary pumps are gonna come up to full brew pressure and flow rate faster than others, so they register full temperature faster than machines with vibration pumps. General guidance is to only consider temperatures after full brew pressure is reached, or you've got a few seconds of fairly consistent temperatures on your meter. Now, one burning question you might have, can you drink the espresso from these tests? Well, according to JB Weld, the Super Weld product I'm using is non-toxic after curing, but, but it is not certified as food safe. So it's gonna probably be best to sacrifice your test shots to the espresso gods, but I gotta admit, I live on the edge, so I'm not always in a sacrificial mood. So what have I learned? Well, first, JB's UV Cure Super Weld is really super awesome. My probes are still rock solid after months of use, 
and boiling during calibration. Really a lot more robust than I anticipated. In terms of machines, some handle temps way better than others. You know, I've learned how to get steady temps from traditional single boilers like the Gaja Classic Pro E24 right here. How flush routines and idle times impact temperature on machines with heat exchange boilers. And how machines like the new Gaja Classic GT, this is a dual boiler, stay very consistent through seven back-to-back -back shots, full to two and a half minute intervals. If you'd like to check out that performance, I've linked the video down below that's got that. So, are you thinking of building one? If you do, let me know in the comments what you discover about your machine, or I'm happy to take any other questions there. I'm Mark, and if you love coffee and espresso as much as I do, be sure and subscribe and hit that bell. You know, everything about coffee, it's always just a click away. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you back here soon for more of the best in everything coffee, brought to you by Whole Latte Love.